halftime. Welcome back to Studio One here in New York City. Maria Taylor alongside Jay Williams and Jalen Rose. Phoenix Suns, they are up four at halftime, but Jalen is still shivering because of Ice Trey. So Ice we're Trey. Back. <laughs> the Atlanta matchup against the Knicks, and it was raining threes for the A and really a 17-point win for the Hawks. The entire team played well. They did, and I like how Trey Young came out going for the kill early. He was a tr he was uh, aggressive offensively, and before you know it, his teammates picked up the pace. John Collins had his best game of the series. He had 22 points, and off the bench, Gallinari had 21. Total team effort by the Hawks. And I love the strategy by Nate McMillan as well to kind of funnel Julius Randle to help Clint Capella all the time. He's like a double-double machine. This team has a lot of offensive firepower. They're going to be a problem in the next series. Sure. Trey Young becomes the fourth player ever to average 25 points and 10 assists in his first four career playoff games. Only Steph, Kevin Johnson, and the Big O accomplished the exact same feat. So let's talk about the Knicks side of the ball okay. and, and what needs to change or improve as they head back home to defend home court in New York. I think they're just going to play with better effort and you have to shoot the three better. They have so many players that shot 40% from three this year. Uh, Randall, R.J. Barrett, um, Bullock, they need those guys to shoot better. But the way they got their four seed was isolation basketball. Mm -hmm. That does not work in the playoffs unless you have Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. <laughs> And so they're making him play in the crowd, and they're doing a good job of contesting without following. Yeah, Julius Randle needs to fit more into the continuity of the offense when they pass the ball, get everybody involved. But I do want to say this, regardless of whether the Knicks come back or not, the Knicks has had one hell of a year. Yeah, they right? do. And I, I don't Absolutely. want Knicks fans to blow it out of perspective and start, you know, You're saying well, goodbye? what's going on with Julius Randle? Uh -huh. it, it's, it's, it's that time. He is saying goodbye. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be closing time. The <laughs> Knicks right now are where the Nets were three years ago. Yes. They're a promising team that made the playoffs, that overachieved, that hopefully now you can grab a different Grunnel superstar from around the league to add to that roster. Okay, well, let's talk about a superstar. We'll talk about it when we come back. Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns up four at the half. We talk this game next. Who's ready for a Sunday playoff matinee? We go down south and start it in Atlanta, where Trey Young and the Hawks will host the Knicks in game three. Julius Randle, he has some room to improve, but is hoping to tie up this series at 2 2 and head back to Broadway. Let's count you down to Knicks Hawks. Julian Randall, he's showing us that he's not a superstar. The superstars just aren't stopped. Trey Young was right to mock them and to look at the crowd and say, we here. The message is clear for the Hawks. Take it to the Knicks. And Trey Young is the flame for the ATL. Plus, the most improved to the least seen. Where has Julius Randle's game gone? And can he find it before this series is out of New York's control? Plus, can the Lakers take command against the Suns? Or will Devin Booker step up to even the series? NBA Countdown is now. And a speechless Welcome to NBA Countdown, presented by Hotels.com. Hello and welcome to NBA Countdown. We're coming to you live from above the Heineken River Deck in New York City. I'm Maria Taylor. That is Adrian Ward. Yeah, it is. We've Whoa. got Jalen Rose up, with Oops. the broom uh -huh. looking for sweeps. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Jay Will in the building well, as least. well. And we get to start off today with a very classic North versus South rivalry. Mm -hmm. We are in Atlanta, and we knew that this was going to be a good series. Let's recap what we've seen so far. Trey Young took over in Game 1 in Knicks Hawks, scoring 32 points, 10 assists in his playoff debut, and hit the game winner with one second remaining in New York. Then the Knicks bounced back in Game 2 by stopping Atlanta late in the game. The Knicks outscored the Hawks by 9 points in the final 5 minutes, holding Atlanta to 0 for 8 shooting. But once again, New York did not have an answer for for Young in Game 3, who scored or assisted on 54 points in the win. Julius Randle struggled as well, making two of his 15 shots. He also shot 0 for 8 on two-pointers in Atlanta, and obviously this is their second game there. The question is, Jalen, was it something that Atlanta's doing that's been limiting Julius Randle? He's shooting 24% from the field in this series. So Shout to Nate McMillan. I actually played against Mac 10, and I know that he's going to focus on defense as a head coach. And one thing that he's doing to Julius Randle is forcing him to play in the crowd. We're in New York City right now. Yeah. Julius understands New York City can be as crowded and every inch has always lived. 
And that's what they're doing to him. You see Clint Capella? He's a help side defender. So you use Gallo. You use Collins. They, they're limp. They get up on them. They play them at the three-point line. Use their athleticism. And then they're forcing them right to Clint Capella. So watch when Julius goes into his ISO since he led the league in that category, how Clint Capella is a strong side helper. And Jay Rose, they keep shading that left hand. They shade that left hand. All right, Julius, you want to come in here and finish? Try to finish with your right hand multiple times. I think the biggest question for the Knicks is how they defend Trey Young in that ball screen action. All right, because he's so dynamic. If you allow him to turn different ways and then all of a sudden start making shots going downhill, he gets the rest of that offense, Hunter, Herder, he gets all these guys involved. And that's, that's what creates momentum for that team. So you have to stop him, cut up the snake, ahead of the snake. And, and Jalen Jay, New York has got to move that ball. Mm. They've got to make quicker decisions when the ball is in Julius Randle's hands, R.J. Barrett's hands, and the crowd comes. They have got to move the pass. And sometimes it's that second pass that gets you the open shot, and that's something you haven't seen the Knicks do in this series. And one thing that we came to know the Knicks for was defense. I mean, they were top in the league in defense in almost every category, and we've seen the Hawks kind of having their way and finding their offensive flow against the Knicks. MT, can we be real here? Because mm -hmm. I, I love the Knicks. Love this, love this. Love this, right? Mm -hmm. Being great defensively during the regular season is completely mm. different than being great during the playoffs Preach defensively. It. Because the talent level the Hawks have is superior to the Hawks to the Knicks, right? Yep. So now the Hawks are playing defense at that same threshold. So you need guys like Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett to pick up the load offensively because now everybody's intensity is heightened. And also for Trey Young, half game will travel. He a four level score. So when we're talking about a handful of players in the league that shoot from the logo, that completely distorts the defense. And now all of a sudden you're guarding him close to half court with a, with a pick and roll action. He going downhill, he could throw the lob, he could do the runner, he could do the floater. And Trey Young has really improved as a playmaker. He's a terrific scorer and he's making a name for himself in these playoffs. Yeah, you know, one position the Knicks had great depth in early this season was at center. But Mitchell Robinson is still out with a fractured foot. And Nerlens Noel continues to be limited with an ankle sprain. He played 22 minutes in game three. I'm told not to expect him to play much more than that mm. in any of these games. And New York is really mm. uh, relying on Taj Gibson to carry a big load mm. uh, in the middle for them. All right. Well, the New York Knicks have won just one playoff series since 2000, 2001. And obviously, this entire city, our entire studio, will be tuned into this game because <laughs> they're trying to get a win for the Knicks. Look at the Southern hospitality being paid to Mark Jones. He's in the barbershop in State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Jonesy, you know I can appreciate that because I'm most known in delivery rooms and barbershops. <laughs> I love he got his notes in front of him just getting taped up. What's good? For the culture. Hotter than fish grease. I think that's what he's actually I got a go barber in Atlanta. His name is Hawk. I'll see you soon, family. All right. Very rooms and barbershops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got more than just the Hawks and the Knicks. Does LeBron and the Lakers have what it takes to go ahead and go in repeat mode and get another win, or is it going to be Devin Booker stepping up?